in today's video, you're going to meet a wonderful client who flew all the way from LA to Michigan to have me give her a pedicure and reshape her big toenails, so stay tuned. Before I get started, I have to give you a sneak peek. I loved doing this transformation. Can you see the area on her toe that was causing her so much discomfort? My goal here today is to relieve the pain she feels under her big toenail. The nail wall is not where it is supposed to be. All the tools you see being used in the pedicure service today are available on my online store. You can find the links in the description and in the comments. I spoke to a client last week who watches on her mobile phone and she said she didn't know there was a tiny black drop down arrow on the right side of the video title. And I will show you where that is a little later in the video. One reason it is so important to shorten nails like this is they can collect so much buildup under the toenail. This material is a collection of exfoliated skin cells, perspiration, dirt, and soap bubbles. And I know you think that sounds weird, but when you wash your body and your hair in the shower, the bubbles travel down your body and they travel the path of least resistance. They will get stuck under the nails, and if they aren't rinsed away, they dry and harden. In addition to having signs of a ram's horn toenail, she also has signs of nail fungus. And in order for any topical solution to be effective, the nail needs to be free of all of the buildup under the nail. In situations where someone has a toenail that gets thick or starts to curve, the nail can get worse if it's not thinned out because the nail will hit the top of the shoe or the end of the shoe they're wearing. And the trauma caused to the matrix of the nail hitting the shoe or just the pressure on the nail from the shoe will cause the nail to grow even more thick. And when the nail gets thick, it's hard to trim. And when it's hard to trim, it gets too long. It's just a vicious circle. But she did contemplate going to see a podiatrist to have it removed, but she wants to have a big toenail and doesn't want to go through the healing process of having a toenail removed. So I'm very flattered that she values my skills that she flew all the way from LA to Michigan for me to help her. Here I'm using the cross cut medium fine ceramic bit with my electric file to shape and contour the surface of her nail. I'm using very light pressure, letting the equipment do the work. If you press down too hard, it will make a terrible squeal and you can build heat up and it will be very uncomfortable for the client. You need to be gentle and stay away from the live skin on the sides and the back of the nail. I like the ceramic cone bit because it is very easy to see how close you're getting to the cuticle area. I'm wondering what your skin is. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously I've seen a lot of these, but should she have some nail microses? I bought some of that. Okay. So I do have that. She can try the, um, I think you've had some damage because it kind of bunches up here and here, the nail. And when it does that, and you can see that it produces these rings mm -hmm. of toenail, mm -hmm. it almost like has a hiccup in it where it's growing, it's growing fast in the middle, but it's growing slow on the sides. And it's making this arch and it pulls it to the side as it grows. So it's probably ram's horn and the, the growth pattern probably won't correct. Yeah. No. So we'll just have to control it, shape it. Even though I don't think using the nail mycosis is going to change the growth pattern of her nail, it will control the thickness of the nail due to the nail fungus. If you look really closely as I'm thinning out this toenail, you can start to see those rings I was talking about. 
the layers of how the nail is produced. They look like smiley faces. You can see a little line on the right hand side right there on the tip of that drill bit and you can see them there. There's little rings almost how the inside of a tree is and um, when you trim the nail you'll see that a lot on the other toenails that I do. Oh see you can see them right here that they'll peel away in like a big layer. See how that's peeling away? Side note, I have a super fun announcement at the end when I'm polishing her nails. So I can already tell how long you've been using the nail mycosis, about six weeks? Um, I, used, I, I was telling you, I used it about two weeks and then I stopped and I haven't used it since and then I was going to be well, I can tell a little ledge in the back, so of, of new growth. I can even feel it. Yeah. Yeah. So I figured as soon as I graduated, I'd be back on track. I've got to tell you that applying this cuticle remover dissolves that filed nail and it gets kind of goopy here in a second. Yes. So if you don't want to watch, just fast forward. Um, to keep it from traveling around, I guess. Yeah. I told you, it's goopy. I love to reward my viewers by drawing at random one of the subscriber comments made on the video. Be sure to leave me a comment for your chance to win one of the tools I am using in the video. One comment will also be chosen for my comment hall of fame on my Instagram. For those of you watching on a mobile device who can't see the description or links I speak about, click the tiny black arrow next to the title of the video. A whole bunch of information and all of the links will pop up and if you scroll down even further you'll be able to comment on the video. Let me give you my thought process when I started working on this nail. You might be wondering why I didn't thin it out before I started to trim it. I thought that there were areas on the end that were still thin enough that I could remove it and it would cut down a lot of time of having to file so much surface. Now I did bend the tip of my nippers a little bit but I'm just using the back part of them and they still work great. So I was able to finish trimming off a lot of the length of this nail. Now you can see, remember those um, smiley faces I was talking about on the other nail? When I trim this you'll be able to see how I pull away and it will just separate into layers. Now I'll tell you, she is supposed to come back in a couple of weeks for her next service. I hope Bruce didn't scare her off because he literally talked her head off the entire time I was giving her her pedicure. He grew up in Southern California, so they had a lot in common that they were chatting about. I was wondering the same thing, so, but so far so good.
something you do have to be very careful about when trimming a toenail like this. Her nail wall is growing over into the center of her nail bed. You can see the redness and the skin's kind of peeling away there at the tip. If I try to squeeze this nail, there is a chance that it will press down into her toenail and that's what the pressure feel she okay? feels is. So I'm making sure that I'm not going to hurt her. I wanna keep my communication really good so I don't just go ahead and squeeze and it presses. You have to also listen to their body language. You might do, you know, a short little squeeze and if you feel their toes start to tense. It takes a little curve or turn. It goes like this and then it goes down. So <clears throat> I just want to be careful. So I end up using a nail file here in a minute. Well, maybe a couple of minutes. <laughs> but I do get a lot of this out of there. Now we'll do some filing. It's just the way your toenail grows. Remember how I said that it grows slower on the sides and faster in the middle, so you get those little yeah, lines. get a little bit of that area that was digging into the tip of your toe. It was pressing right there. That was probably pretty sore.
That probably hurts when it presses into your skin, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty Yeah, when I squeeze to try to trim it, it wants to press it down into your skin, so maybe we'll just try to file it. you can for sure because um, the edge of that nail you know it's supposed to be growing over here and that's why we make those little impressions so it's trying to make a new impression vertically across and that's why it's so sore you can see this little indention here so it goes from here all the way back yeah but being in the center of your nail it's, it's pressing the toenail up too. I just have a little bit of cleanup to do and then she does get nail polish today because she does have some space where the nail mycosis can get to the underside of the nail I think it's okay if she wears nail polish home the nail mycosis solution does work best without nail polish on because it cannot penetrate through nail polish but it does and it does need to get to the affected part of the nail but because there's space under her nail it will be effective in preventing the nail fungus from moving back toward her cuticle area especially I am really excited to get to see her again in a few weeks. I will definitely be posting the follow-up. I can't wait to see what her nails look like and if the sidewall has changed direction at all and not pressing down into the center of her nail bed. You will get a notification of my uploads and the title of the videos if you have subscribed, so I hope you do decide to do that. I appreciate all of your support. This time last year, I only had 100,000 subscribers, and now I have 353,000. You guys have helped me meet and exceed my goals for the year, and I love you so much for it. Thank you so much. Um, I have one more exciting thing to tell you if you don't follow my other social media. I applied for a patent in September of 2017 for an ergonomic hand rest for nails and I just received my patent on July 30th of this year. This is a very exciting time in my life and I just wanted to share the great news with you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to visit my channel. People like you are the reason for my success and I appreciate it so much. But remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel for all the latest videos. Remember it is free and I'll see you next time.